Hello everyone, my name is Roy, and in today's recording I'll be showing how you can create static documentation for a GraphQL API built with steps in. And for this we'll be using a tool called SpectaQL. So more about the tool later, first let's have a look at a GraphQL API. So with steps in you can create a GraphQL API for any data source, and today's data source is the Frankfurt or REST API. Using this API you can get currency information from all different currencies as published by the European Central Bank. So in a project, which you can find in our repository uh, with all steps and examples, which you can find in the biography of this video, you can find that we have a GraphQL file called frankfurter.graphql, which has all the return types for this API and also a list of queries. And using this list of queries, you can send requests to the REST API endpoints from this API. So an example, if we would copy paste this one and go to our browser, you can see this API will return a JSON response with all these different fields that are also uh, described in this GraphQL schema. If we would start this API using the command step send start, this will take our GraphQL files and turn them into a GraphQL API that gets automatically deployed for you on step send. So it's now deploying our API, after which it will return us the production API endpoint, which is this one, um, and also a local GraphQL playground. And using this local GraphQL playground, we can introspect the API using our browser. So this is the GraphQL playground as you often see it. And people often use this to uh, document their GraphQL API. So you would have the documentation tab here with all your queries. So these are all the queries that are also in our project files and also the return types for these queries. An example to Frankfurt historical rates, we return these fields with these values. So this is a very nice way to document your GraphQL API and it's something we often see. And using this documentation, we can easily figure out what type of queries we can send. So we can do uh, an example, this query, I usually just copy paste it like this. Frank for historical rate. So from, uh, we would be going from euros to let's say US dollars for an amount of one and the date. Uh, maybe let's just try today. And then our return, of course, will be something like the amount, the date, and of course the rates, because we want to know the value of one euro in US dollars today. So this will say at the 22nd of February, um, one euro is worth one US dollar and 13 cents. And then we can also do this for different dates, of course. If we go back one year, you can see the value is a bit, bit more. So a year ago, a US dollar was worth less than it is today, which is quite interesting to see from this API. We can, of course, prettify this. And you can do much more using the Frankfurter API. But having a GraphQL documentation is usually not enough because sometimes you also want more. So you want to give consumers of your API a way to go to the browser, to go to a web page and find your documentation there. And for this, we'll be using a library called SpectaQL. And SpectaQL is a open source library, which you can install from NPM, which I'll be doing here. So let's install it globally, NPM install, put in the global flag and then type in SpectaQL press enter, and this will start installing SpectaQL globally on my machine, after which I can use it to create the documentation. And to create the documentation, it will also take this configuration file. And in here I've defined the logo I want to use in my documentation, and I've also defined the steps and API endpoint, which will be used for introspection. And of course, I also put in my authorization API key, because you want to make sure that your uh, steps and endpoint isn't publicly available. So this will be hidden behind the authorization. And also in here, some meta information like a title, description, and most of all important, your contact details. Because if you create documentation, you want your users to be able to reach out to you and get more information about your API. So SpectaQL is installed. And using this configuration file, I can start creating my documentation. And for this, I'll be using MPX, uh, press in SpectaQL, and then also tell it where my configuration file is, so config.jaml. I press enter and now SpectaQL will start creating uh, the static documentation for me. And this will create a new directory inside my project, which will hold all the files needed to render the documentation. 
So let's wait for the CLI to finish. And then pretty soon you'll be seeing that a new directory called public will be created inside my project. It is all completed and now we can see this directory public is here with images, which is my logo, some JavaScript files, some style sheets, and also an index.html file. And this index.html file is my actual documentation. So I would go here, I already loaded it for you. You can see my documentation is being loaded here. It says steps and Frankfurter API, it has my logo, and then it has all my different operations, which are just queries. If you would go here, you can see it has my API, the one we used before, which was historical rates. So the query is called Frankfurter historical rates. It takes multiple parameters, uh, like the currency you want to convert to the currency you want to convert it to, also the amount and the date. You will get an example query, example variables, and an example of the response. And then in the welcome section, you can also see the endpoint for this. So we have one endpoint, which is on production, because with steps and you will get a GraphQL API endpoint deployed on production. And this endpoint can be found in the documentation. It also has my contact details. And besides the operation, which are now, current, now just only queries, you also get all the different types. So you will have the uh, default scholar types, which are Boolean, float, string as well. And then also custom scholar, scholars like Frankfurter historical rates, which is a type I created myself. And using just a few set of commands, you will not only get a GraphQL API with a GraphQL playground, but you can also get SpectaQL that creates static documentation for you. So this way you can set up a prediction ready API within just minutes. So thanks for watching. Make sure to follow our channel so you can watch all our other videos. So thank you and hope to see you soon.